I'm Steve Hefter. I'm here interviewing Tab Benoit right before he hits the stage at the Birchmere in Alexandria, Virginia. Tab, thanks a lot for taking a few minutes of your time. I'd like to just ask you a few questions, mainly about uh, uh, what kind of gear you use. I know you don't use a lot, which is actually kind of yeah. interesting. Um, I saw you last year, and uh, I know you have three Telecasters you use primarily. Yeah. Um, and why the Telecasters, and and why no effects? Um, well, I mean, firstly, uh, the, you know, the guitars I use are because of uh, really just trying to match the sound I heard in my head, you know. When, when you, I guess, you know, when you're playing guitar, you're trying to find something that matches what you hear. So, so it's not frustrating when you're trying to make something come out and it doesn't work, you know. And a lot of guitars that I had played before, just it was just something that they weren't doing that, you know, I heard and I was trying to get out and it wouldn't come out, you know. And, I played a friend of mine's, uh, I didn't even know that, you know, a Telecaster Thin Line existed, you know, and a friend of mine had one and brought it to a jam session and I played it and I went, that's it, you know. <laughs> The one? Yeah, well, and he wouldn't sell it to me. It was his dad had a Fender dealership back in the seventies, and it's the only thing that they kept from the whole dealer when they sold it. They, they kept this guitar, and uh, and he would not sell it to me for anything because it was like a family heirloom. So I had to go look for one, you know, find one in Houston, and then uh, you know, then I just went and found spares. You know, I don't have different guitars for different sounds or tones or anything. It's just. Basically, so I don't have to change all my settings, you know, when I plug in another guitar. So uh, that way, if I bust a string, so I'm plug another one in, it's ready to go. Yeah, yeah which I saw you do last year, and you yeah. threw that thing aside and kept jamming. Yeah. Yeah, what kind of strings do you use? GHS, 11, you know. And what, what amp are you playing through? Playing through Category 5s. Uh, you know, they, they uh, copied my 65 Twin and 65 Super, so it's basically... A twin and a super, but uh, you know, a lot better built and uh, a lot more sturdy for the road, and, and they did a great job. I mean, I wouldn't use them if they didn't work. You know, is that a signature series? Is it yeah, yeah, the signature series, and part of the profits from the sale of those amps goes back to Voice of the Wetlands, which okay, is good. A, the nonprofit organization that I've been working with you know, and started back in '04. So. Yeah, yeah, I've read a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah. so, um, you know, I, I, it was a good idea that, you know, a guy came up with after Katrina. He, he, this guy came up to me and, and said he wanted to uh, build amps for all of the Voice of the Wetlands guys, and uh, I said, well, that's cool, but you know, it's got to work. <laughs> I mean, it, it's a great idea, but if they don't work, I can't use them. But they made one that worked. Yeah, he made two of them that worked, so, you know. But, uh, you know, and they went back and forth with me, and, you know, if it wasn't right, they made it right, and, uh, you know. The main thing was to try to get an old sound out of a new amp, you know. And, um, yeah, I, got, I didn't want it to sound like a brand new Super. I wanted it to sound like an old, like mm -hmm. it had been worn in, you know. And, uh, you know, because I don't use pedals, that's a big deal, you know. Well, yeah. So, um, you know, that's you know, they, they did a great job with it. Yeah, you're one of the few guitar players I've seen in years and years that plugs directly into the amp. Yeah. Yeah, and the sound that you get is, is amazing. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> it works. People forgot that, you know, you know, every time you you run your guitar through something else and back into that amp source, you're taking a piece of that original signal away to substitute something else in there. And I, I'd rather the direct connect, you know, it's a... It's more about it with the way it feels than the way it sounds, you know, and my, my thinking on that is the sound is a byproduct of the feel, not the other way around. So I want it to feel right. If it feels right, it sounds right. And uh, and the only way to really get a good feel of what's happening is to be directly plugged in. And, you know, I can feel the back of the room. I can feel the sound bouncing off of people's faces, you know, I mean, it, it really does work. That That's one of your, my favorite quotes from the show you played last year, I saw, yeah. Was that? Yeah, you said, uh, you know, it just doesn't sound right. Try practicing with no one in the room. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And then you said you need to have people. Yeah. yeah you bounce it off their faces. That's right, yeah. it works. Yeah, yeah, because there is quote. a sound with that, you know. <laughs> yeah, I love that quote. So when did you finally get that sound that you were looking for? How long did it take? Because you've been playing for a while. No, I'm still working on it, you know what I mean? It's all, it's all just about trying to get what you're feeling out 
the blues, like, you know, many, many years ago, you were trying to do yeah. something different before you really found the blues. Uh, well, I mean, I was playing whatever gigs was coming around. I didn't have my own band, you know. I mean, when you first start out, you're playing in other people's bands, and whatever music they're picking to play, that's where you play. You know, you get hired to play guitar for a country band, you got to play country all night. You get hired to play in a rock band, you got to play rock. So, uh, you know, the, when I started my own band, the first band I started was a blues band. Mm -hmm. That's what I felt like I should be doing, you know. That's the stuff that I love more and had more of those elements that I liked, which is just stripped down, you know, play play the feeling of the moment that's going on right now and, uh, and try to make the audience, uh, you know, join in and, in that feeling of that moment, you yeah. know, yeah. by what you're giving them. Through your instruments, and the audience appreciates it too. Yeah, and I think you know, I think you continuously get better at that if you're doing that. You know, I mean, you get, you have to be working on that and instead of working on uh, you know trying to come up with fancy licks and things that are tricks and stuff. I work on trying to make sure that uh, what I'm feeling in the moment right now is coming out you know mm -hmm. and, and that never really ha happens <laughs> so yeah it always gives you something to strive for so you're always working on it yeah yeah but that's what keeps you interested and uh it keeps you engaged you know i mean if i'm not interested and engaged i can't expect the audience to be either you know yeah. so uh you know it's, it's an important aspect i think you know and all the guys i loved i mean that's how they did it, you know yeah. i mean john lee hooker and like in Hopkins and guys like that, they walked in and they played one time and they gone. You know, yeah. hope you caught it while you know while they were playing it because that was it. You know, yeah, yeah, that's in, and in the studio and live and everything. It was always you know, this is it right now. Boom. <laughs> Tell me about writing. <coughs> How, how's that process for you? I read a little uh, a little blurb. Uh, you and Anders Osborne out on mm -hmm. the Bayou. Yeah. And came back with uh, seven songs after your little trip. Yeah, a couple of nights and you know. I mean, that's where I always did all my writing was just to get away from, you know, the mainland, and get out on the water and uh, get out in the swamp and, you know, those songs out there. So I just go out there and get them, you know, and that's the first time I really did any, uh, any real co-writing with somebody else, you know. And it was just a good timing for it, you know, and was, uh, was going through some things and was just getting back to, you know, his goal and... Uh, and I hadn't done a record in a while. I hadn't written any, really, hadn't written any songs since uh, Katrina, really. Uh, this is for medicine. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, this was like a few years that passed. And, you know, I, and I had lost my my camp, you know, which is where I do all my writing in, in the storm. So mm -hmm. um, I just got my camp going again and, uh, you know, so let's just go do it, you know. And uh, it, just, it just flows real easy out there. You know, it's just... Writing is, uh, I don't write 100 songs and pick the best 12, you know. I write 11 and, you know, and that's all 11. you're getting, yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, uh, I, you know, I ain't gonna, I'm not gonna haggle over something that doesn't go, come easy, you know. Mm -hmm. if, it, if it doesn't come easy, then it's not comfortable and it's not gonna flow and the audience ain't gonna get it and you're not gonna get it and uh, I don't, you know. I, I, and every night you got to play those things. Yeah. If you're not happy with it, it's a waste of time. Yeah, yeah. you're wasting everybody's time. So mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I keep the try to keep it as simple as possible and let the songs pretty much write themselves. You know, who's out there now that you look up to that's playing? Like right now? Yeah, who's out there? I don't know. It's not a lot. I mean, you know, that's no. why I'm here to see you tonight. Well, I, you know, there ain't a lot of people doing it this way. I tell you that. And I mean, this is you know. So what I thought was the way, you know, was, uh, you know, strip it down here, you know, these are, you're an artist, you know, and these are your paintbrushes, and you're going out there and you're painting a picture, and, you know, you don't want, you don't want to watch somebody paint by numbers, you know, so all these different tricks and everything that you come up with to try to invent something is, and then you practice it and rehearse it until you got it perfect, that's, to me, that's just painting by numbers, you know, you come out there, you see them today, you see them tomorrow, you're going to see the same picture. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I always thought that, especially in the blues world, that you should be taking, capturing a moment for what it is, you know, good or bad or indifferent, doesn't matter, that's the moment, capture it for what it is in music, and that should be 
good artwork, you know, period. Um, you know, and everybody will get it. It's not like you're going to go over anybody's heads because everybody's involved in that moment, you know, together. So, uh, you know, uh, that to me, that was the way that I thought music should be done. Mm -hmm. Have you put out a live album with just the trio? Mm -hmm. With just the trio? Uh, every time we do a live album, you know, any album really, there's always some kind of special guest that come up. Right. Um, there's trio songs on those live albums, but, you know, it's uh, it's always something that, you know, a record label thinks that, you know, a trio record ain't going to work or something. You know, a lot of times that's what it comes down to, but, you know, whatever, I don't care. I mean, <laughs> I like to play. I like to play with my friends also, you know, and I, I have no problem with that. And, and none of those things are ever rehearsed out. It's all natural, and yeah. you know, this is the way it is. Boom, I can play it, and uh, you know, hopefully everybody gets it. But usually they do. Yeah, usually they do. At least when I've seen you, they yeah. are getting it, and uh, we're looking forward to getting it tonight. Yeah. Um, anything you'd like to to share with our uh, our audience out there? Um, the biggest tip I think that I could give them is, uh, you know. Uh, don't worry about the left hand so much, you know. Don't worry about the notes and the chords so much. You know, the right hand is where the the feel comes from, you know. Um, I mean, I do stuff on a guitar where I'm not using any notes, where I'm just blocking the strings and beating it like a drum, you mm -hmm. know. Uh, I mean, uh, you know, playing those washboard effects on there. I mean, that's that's that has no that has, has no notes to it, but. But there's feel to it, you know, and and it makes the music feel a certain way, and that's what I think uh, a lot of people miss because it's frustrating to learn all of this and get your fingers coordinated where every note comes out when you play a chord, and um, and when you get frustrated, you know, you're not learning anything. So a lot of times I'll just tell people, hey man, you know, take take one day where you just forget about learning something with your left hand, learning chords and notes and how to put them together and just sit there and pick a rhythm that's easy to play and play it for a while, play it for an hour, try to make it feel like it's moving, mm -hmm. you know. Put some um, passion into it. Yeah, I mean, close your eyes, you know, stop looking. <laughs> that's good advice, I think. And, and, it just make, and just make it feel like it's moving. And when it feels like it's moving, you have a better chance of pulling off the other stuff with your left hand, you know. Because it's got to move to be musical. If it doesn't move, it's just a straight line, and nobody's buying straight lines. <laughs> that's, that's good advice. Yeah. That's good advice. I really appreciate your time. I'm going to let you do what you need to do All before right. the show. Thanks, man. Thank you very much.